How Satan Leads Atheists to Jesus Christ. Let me explain. Okay, Open your mind here for a minute and just listen to me. There are a lot of atheists that I have known, or former atheists that I have known, that were actually led to the Lord through understanding what's really going on in the world. Here's how atheism works. Most atheists out there are actually not really atheists, they're anti-religionists. <laughs> and that's smart. That's very smart. I'm not making fun of them for that. That's actually a good thing. They're either raised in church, be it Catholic church or Protestant churches. If they're Catholic, sometimes they get molested as a priest or Protestant as well. And they grow up and they get very disillusioned. They see the hypocrisy of organized religion and they say, Ugh, I don't want anything to do with that. They're looking for some way to explain away religion and ultimately God. And so they go off to a university or they their high school or whatever else and they hear about evolution theory and they say, ah, there we go. Science has proved that there's no God. So they go with that as a theory. And they say, okay, since there is no God, I can enjoy my life. I can go out and I can do what I want without any feelings of guilt or whatever. There's no sin. There's no eternity in hell or any of that other stupid stuff. All that just fairy tale thing and whatever else. If you're an atheist, that's what you believe. And you go out and you say, I don't need God or the Bible to be a good person. And so a lot of atheists, they genuinely want to be good people. They want to go out and they want to be left alone. I want to have my own family. Don't come to my door knocking and inviting me to your church. I'm not coming, okay? Go away. I'll listen to the music I want to listen to. I'll watch what I want on television. I will eat the foods that I want. I'll do whatever I feel like doing. And as good people, they're out there in the world and all of a sudden they run into a bad person and maybe a high level bad person. And they think, well, this person's going to be in trouble with the law and that person gets away with it. How's that possible? They, how did they get out of that punishment? And they think, well, that's weird. And then they go out and they try to get famous and they do their hardest work and whatever else. And they can't really get anywhere, but then they see somebody with less talent be it in the military or acting or business or whatever, and they see this person just skyrocketing up the corporate ladder, the ladder of success, and they think, I'm 10 times more talented than that person. How are they getting up like this? And the atheist, if they're intelligent, they will start to actually study and they'll start to look into this and they'll say, it seems like there's some kind of an organization here, some kind of fraternity or some weird thing and if you're part of it, you succeed. And if you're not, you don't succeed. And if you're part of the same organization, the old boys club, um, you get protection. You can get away with crime. You can get away with murder. Huh. George Carlin, the uh, famous comedian, foul-mouthed comedian, he came out, spoke about it. There's an old boys network, and you and I aren't part of it. Was he telling the truth? Mm hmm Yeah. He was absolutely telling the truth. So the smart atheist starts to say, you know what? I want to look into this. Who are these people? Some of you know the atheists, they just say, well, I don't, you know what? I don't need to know. Ignorance is bliss. I don't want to look into this anymore. But the smart one comes along and he says, I'd like to know about this. What's this Freemasonic stuff all about? And the Bilderbergers and the Club of Rome and the Council on Foreign Relations and the Illuminati and the you know, Jesuits and all these, I don't even, maybe that stuff's all just kooky or whatever, but I'm going to check into it. Hey, I'm, I'm open-minded. I'm scientific. I'm logical. I'll check into this. And all of a sudden they realize, okay, there's some facts that might not line up here perfectly, but these people are, they're definitely connected. There's definitely some stuff here. And it seems as though if you get into the deep enough studies, they all worship this being called Lucifer. And then it starts to dawn on these atheists. If there is a Lucifer, then that would mean that the Bible's correct. Uh-oh. You mean there are people out there that if you worship this being called Lucifer, Satan, the devil, then you get ahead in life. And if you don't, you'll be kept down. Huh. 
And then you start to realize when you really come to the truth that Satan is actually the one behind organized religion. I'm going to show you. If you're to that point as an atheist where you're saying, okay, you know what? Um, I'm looking for a scholarly, tell me the truth here. Not just rabid religious rantings of crazy people. I'm seeing some things. I'm seeing that old boys network. And it's scary. They kill people. They assassinate presidents. They bring down countries. They create wars. Huh. I'd like to know a little bit more about that. What does the Bible have to say? Does the Bible talk about this? Matthew chapter 4. Just show you a couple scriptures today. Something to think about. Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. The devil in the wilderness, and he's speaking with Jesus. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. The Bible talks in another place, similar account, parallel account to this, that it's in a moment of time. You say, wait, okay, I'll wait a second. It takes him up into a high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world. How does that work? It, well, very simple. It could have been a supernatural thing that the devil did there. I don't know exactly how it worked. But don't miss the point here. Is there a truth to this? If you fall down and worship Satan, Lucifer, the devil, if you fall down and worship him, will he give you the kingdoms? Are you seeing the knights, the knighthoods of the Vatican, the knights of the equestrian order, knights of Malta, uh, the knights of Columbus, the knights of higher up levels? Are you seeing the Freemasons? which is actually just another Catholic knighthood. Are you seeing the Bilderbergers? Are you seeing the Club of Rome, the World Economic Forum, the, all these different people? Are you seeing it? And that's confirming Scripture. Hmm. But notice there, verse 7. Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Satan is subservient to God. He can only do things if God gives him permission. You can read back in the book of Job, chapters 1 and 2. You'll see that. Satan has to appear before God, and he has to get permission before he can do anything. So if you get to the point where you can believe in Satan, because you see these people are definitely worshiping him, and they're getting power from him, that confirms the scriptures, then you have to realize, as powerful as Satan is, God is more powerful. The Lord Jesus Christ, he's more powerful. And you can have a relationship with him, not through church, not through 10% tithe, uh, through your Sunday best or whatever else. You can know him personally. 1 John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. Back towards the Old Testament. 1 John chapter 5, verses 18 and 21, or 18 through 21, excuse me. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding, that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Some really profound advice right there. The whole world lieth in wickedness. And the more you study things, the more you realize, man, there's so much greed and corruption and just wicked things. I can't believe this. These people are doing this and that. I trusted so-and-so and they turned out to be a hypocrite and all this other stuff. People are turning on me because I'm asking questions. You mean you're looking for the truth? Mm -hmm. The truth is in God. It's in Jesus Christ. Read right about it there in verse 20. 
We know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding. Do you want understanding? you truly want to be wise? That we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Jesus Christ is the true God. And eternal life comes through Jesus Christ. And when you understand these people that worship Satan and you start to look at that, that and the evil that these people do and, and are involved in, you realize why the Bible talks about hell. That's where those people go. And they deserve it. And if you don't think that they deserve it, well, then you need to continue learning about what they do. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. You say, well, okay, I can see that. I can see some of it. What about this thing of organized religion? 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Satan, if you want to know the biggest Satanists out there, they're an organized religion. I've met them. I've seen them and talked to them face to face. Um, there's some really wicked preachers out there. Uh, the Vatican is full of them. And the Protestant churches are, for the most part, as well. Um, there's some very evil people. And you'll see these guys, they transform themselves into the ministers of Christ. Sunday morning, oh, holy, holy, holy. They come out with their robes on and Blessings to the congregation and everything else. And the night before, they're raping a child back in their study. Molesting children. They're Freemasons. Going through all kinds of, Lord only knows what kind of rituals these guys go through. Yeah. See, the Bible is actually a lot closer to reality than you've been led to believe if you're an atheist. You ought to study this Bible and drop your prejudices against what this Bible condemns, you know. I'm prejudiced towards organized religion. Well, so is this book. So am I. Come learn the truth. Revelation chapter 12. Last place we'll turn to here. The Bible is an amazing book that you can spend your whole life studying and you still won't understand it all. When you open your mind and the Holy Spirit of God comes in and shows you truth. Now I'll show you a wild one. You say... You know, this whole Bible stuff, I, man, I don't know, it's just mythology to me. Well, let me give you a real good one to think about. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. You say, oh, dragon. Now we're fighting dragons. Okay. Oh. All right. Aesop's fables, um, you know, what is this, Beowulf or something? Or I mean, you know, what are we dealing with here? Camelot or something? He's fighting a dragon in heaven. Let's continue to read. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his, and his angels were cast out with him. The devil is where right now? He's in heaven. This is describing a future event. The devil's in heaven answering to God has to get permission before he can do anything. Hmm. But he gets cast out into the, in the future. It's a rather interesting thing. So if you want to retain your atheistic beliefs and you say, I have to live by sight, I have to see it, I have to see demonstrable, provable, observable evidence, empirical scientific evidence before I can be persuaded to believe this book. If you're young enough, you'll be seeing this. You'll see the devil coming down. But the problem is he doesn't come down in a good mood. <clears throat> Verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser, accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. He puts... You know, save people to death, in other words. Verse 12. 
Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So, if you want to survive the years ahead and go ahead and see that those events come to pass, then go ahead. And you will see all the proof that you want. Um, atheism is going to be coming to an end within the next 10 to 20 years. I will give you a prophecy, a sure word of prophecy. And if you're alive in 20 years from now, 10 to 20 years from now, and everything's just wonderful and hunky-dory and there's nothing at all going on, no bad stuff, in terms of what the Bible says, I realize that you could say, well, there's always bad stuff. I get that. But I'm saying end of the world as we know it, you know, kind of thing. If that's there in 10 years, well, then you can just say kooky preacher, what an idiot, and whatever else. Um, but if you really want to be scientific here, um, look into who's controlling things and who's pulling the shots and what they're planning for the future and how that these people are Luciferians. Look into the secret societies and whatever else. And my favorite thing is that, you know, I've dealt with people so many times over the years and they'll, I say the Masons are Satanists. They said, no, they're not. I can prove it. Well, how can you prove it? I went to their website and they said that they're not. <laughs> okay. You know, you go to the thief and you say, did you rob the bank? No, I, I didn't do anything. And like, oh, see, he's innocent. He said he didn't rob the bank. You know, never mind that big bag of money sitting over there in the corner, but you know, that he's, that's from something else because he said that he's not. <laughs> um, you'll discover it. If you look for it, you'll discover that, uh, yes, there are people that worship Satan. And the only hope for you when you find that is to get in touch with Jesus Christ, not with organized religion. Okay, because that's actually Satan's system. His ministers appear as the ministers of righteousness. So, please do take my advice. Stay away from organized religion. Stay away from the church building experience out there. Um, study. So you're a kooky Christian. I'm asking you to study. I'm asking you to do some more research. Does that make me kooky? Does that make me weird? No. I'm trying to appeal to you and say, look into this stuff. Check into it. So, but uh, if you want to know how to be saved, genuinely saved, according to the pages of Scripture, you can go to our main channel page, and there's a video there. It's not monetized. If they put ads on it, I'm not making anything from it. YouTube is very annoying with that. I ask that they don't put ads on my videos because my channel's not monetized. I don't make a cent from them. But they continue to put their ads up anyhow. So I apologize if there's an offensive ad or anything and you know, before any of my videos. But go to the main channel page, the main video that comes up, a salvation message, and it'll lead you through the scriptures to tell you how to be saved. All right, so that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.